Welcome, friends, to this afternoon session of our monthly get-together. You have noticed all these years I never have a paper in my hand when I talk to you. If I do have paper, I get confused. <laughs> then I don't know what to say. So that's why I've decided to hide all the papers. I have always said that the sense of humor is a very high sense. It's available to us. Other living forms don't have it. They appear to have it, but they don't really enjoy it. We can enjoy anything when we want to. Sometimes we decide what to enjoy, what not to enjoy. At a higher level of awareness, we can enjoy everything. What makes the difference is, right now, we think we are living in this reality. There is no other reality. If we move one step up, we will see this is a created drama. It's a show. It's not real. Reality is somewhere else. This was created but made real. So we enjoy it more. Instead of enjoying, we decided to suffer. Now that's a very bad choice we made. That we should enjoy this as a show. Now what happened? We go to other shows that are set up in this reality. Like a theatre like a movie. When we go to see a movie, the movie is on a screen. There are no real people there. The shadows. The picture is being cast by a projector which is behind us. We never look at the projector because projector is behind us. We are looking at the screen. And the screen has some pictures of a story and we think, now what will happen next? We don't realize at that time when we say that, that what is going to happen next is already in the film behind. It doesn't, it's not appeared there. So we think it's still going to appear. So we create a past, present, future for something that's all in the present as one film. If you don't play it, it's just one second. It's all together. When you start playing it, it creates past, present and future, it creates time. We are concerned with the time on the screen. And we think, let's see what happens next. Some horrible thing is going to happen. You can see people moving up to the edge of their seats. They're taking it as absolutely real. If somebody were to come and say, why are you taking it so seriously? It's only a movie. It's only a reflection of pictures. It's not even happening now. It happened long ago when the acting took place by actors. And those actors have acted long ago. The movie is out in a, in a film loaded in a projector. And there is a light in the projector that projects movies, still pictures, so fast. You think they are moving. The thing is moving. The pictures in the projector are not moving. We have moved them by help. We, we move them and they move too fast for our eyes to forget the previous picture. So it looks like a movie. It's simply a complete illusion that there is anything happening on the screen. Supposing somebody gave us this lecture, he said, keep quiet and let us watch the movie. We still like to watch the movie and not listen to this kind of explanation. Why is that? Why are we so interested in seeing something recorded much earlier by actors, not by real life. It was an act performed by some people, some actors, and we are now taking it as real life happening on a screen. Okay, bad enough. Now look how we can make it much worse. We are at a distance from the screen. Supposing we decide to go very close to the screen. Very close. As close as the actor there. Not only that, we want to see it from the point of view of an actor and we enter into the head of one of those actors on the screen. What will happen? Now the whole the action, we are part of the action completely. We are seeing the movie in the best possible way we can. That's exactly what we are doing right now. No difference. Movie was shot long ago. This life was prepared long ago. It's all pre-written completely in all details. 
every statement we make, every thought we have, predetermined earlier, packaged and played out now. Like a DVD has been prepared, played out. All we have done is to put ourselves, our real viewing self that can see, hear, touch, taste, smell. We put ourselves in the head of one of the actors and today we think we are the actor. We are not even saying we are the actor, we are that person, we are the identity. We have taken on the identity of one character in a play and we are supposed to enjoy it even more. We have come as close as we could to the show that is taking place, pre-recorded show. Instead of enjoying it from the vantage point we got, we are suffering it. How did that happen? When actors suffer on the screen, nobody gets up to say and help them. Because it's just a show. Movies create such horror scenes. People are murdered there. Nobody gets up from the audience. Let me stop the murder. Because we know it's a movie. While knowing it's a movie, we still want to believe what's happening. How did that happen? How can a drama create a feeling in us that is real? And why should it do that? Do you know to this question an answer was given long ago by a Greek philosopher named Aristotle, a disciple of Plato. Plato was saying, based on Socrates' teachings, that this world is not real. The world of ideas, as propounded by Socrates, is more real than this world. If everything is coming from the world of ideas, if a chair had not been had a concept of sitting above the ground, if first chair had not come into the form of an idea, no chair would exist today. Now we have millions of chairs of different designs from one idea of a chair. Everything is coming from the world of ideas. Aristotle disagreed on this point with Plato. He said, once we have decided to make this world real, why should we go back into the world of ideas? Why should we try to trace what is the origin of it? Enjoy what is here. Enjoy the drama. He says the drama is performing a very useful function in human life. It performs the function of creating a scene in which we can place ourselves in the actors. It is a willing suspension of disbelief that we would normally disbelieve that this is real. We are willingly suspending that disbelief so that we can have purgation of our own emotions. That we carry so many emotions in life that drama, movies is a way by which we get rid of them. We identify with the actors and try to help ourselves. So he gave a function to the movies. Do you know the same function applies to the drama of life? We are just satisfying a mental emotion that has been gathering strength, that has been gathering mo momentum inside us, in our minds, and we get relief by playing it out in this physical world. It's a drama which we have made real. But to know the truth is no harm in knowing the truth. Sometimes you know the truth. And you still can act as a drama, as, a, as an actor. A, a movie was shot called Gandhi on the life of Mahatma Gandhi of India, played by a British actor, Ben Kingsley. It was shot in India. Ben Kingsley, after the movie was released, had won a lot of acclaim. It was a very good movie. Ben Kingsley gave an interview. He said the cameraman wanted to shoot the movie as early as possible. And I said, no, don't shoot the movie till I can wake up in the morning and feel I am Gandhi. So long as I feel a like Ben Kingsley, I will not act well. He every day began to feel he is Gandhi, he is Gandhi. Three months passed. He got up. Gandhi got up. He said, shoot now. What does it mean? That he had to be an actor, character in order to make a movie successful. Do you know how well we are all doing that role? We are all believing we are the actors. We are believing that is our identity, that's our persona. It's no difference at all. 
that one can see more easily because of the distance between the movie screen and ourselves. This we can't see because we decided to come closer to the action by sitting in the head of one of the characters, one of the actors in the movie. That's what the truth is. How can we start re-enjoying this movie? Today we are suffering the ups and downs of this strange roller coaster life. Nobody has a smooth rolling, it's all up and down. A smooth rolling would be too boring. I don't think anybody would enjoy a life of smooth rolling. Ups and downs make it interesting. We like drama with ups and downs. We like life as ups and downs. So these ups and downs, everybody has ups and downs in their human life. If it was all great smooth sailing, there's another place for us to be in. In the astral plane, it's called heaven. If the whole downward trend, if there was nothing but misery, another place for us in the astral plane. It's called hell. Hell and heavens are made for such people, not for us. We came with a roller coaster, high and low, high and low. And all of us are living through high and low. Nobody is living through all the high moments. Nobody is living all low, low moments. We are all having ups and downs. That alone creates a human life like we have now. Wonderful. Now we have this human life and we are so involved in the drama and of course we have created reality. Wonderful system we used. The means we used to make this real are so beautiful. What are the system we used? We divided the perception of objects of life itself into five parts. Seeing is different from hearing. Touching is different from seeing and hearing. Smelling is different. Tasting is different. Touching is different. We divided the sense perceptions. Why? So when I, somebody says, this cup is not real, you are only hallucinating and seeing it. I can use my hand, touch it, it's real. I can use a second sense perception to verify the first one and say it's real. I totally forget at that time that when I'm sleeping and having a dream, if in a dream I saw a cup like this and somebody said, it's not real, in the dream I touch it and say real, when will it become unreal? When I wake up and find the dream was real but not the cup. The cup only was made up in the dream. Similarly, here we are using one sense perception to create the proof of the, of the reality of other sense perceptions, little realizing all the sense perceptions are working at the same level of awareness. Only when we wake up, we realize all sense perceptions were creating experiences. Objects were not real. Experiences were real. This is a wonderful way to get up and see. Therefore, even if you are half awake, you can know it was a dream. You know you are lying in bed, which is a wonderful dream. I once had a dream that I won a five million dollars lottery. <laughs> a dream I had never seen. They asked me cash or check. <laughs> I said cash. <laughs> I want to see dollar bills, 500 million placed in front of me. And as they brought the money, before I could touch it, I woke up. I tried very hard to go to sleep again. <laughs> At least I should gather it and then wake up. <laughs> can you imagine that how we can make a real dream so real, you want to go back to it? But this one is far more attractive than the five million lottery. That's why we don't wake up. We stay in this dream world. If you wake up halfway, you may like to have enjoy this and that. It will become like a daydream, but it will be wonderful. That is why what I was talking of earlier in the day about waking up halfway by withdrawing attention from here, taking it inside, makes this look like a beautiful dream when you can collect your millions and also wake up and know there were no millions. Have the joy of both. That is why there is a beauty in being able to look at this world from a different point of view. 
If you don't want to wake up, I'll give you another suggestion. The second suggestion is that having known that you operate from behind the eyes, take a very comfortable chair. Beautiful chair, the most expensive you can imagine because you won't have to spend any money now. It's imaginary. Imagine you have a beautiful chair behind your eyes where you're sitting and watching life. Watching life from there. Then who is this body? One of the actors. One of the actors of the show. Where are you? Watching from there. Do you move when this body moves? No. You are still in your chair. Body goes through a lot of things. Mind goes through a lot of things. Sort of things change. You don't change. Comfortably sitting in the chair behind the eyes. Try that. Your life will change tomorrow. If you just do this much. You become a spectator of life. Instead of saying, Oh, I am all, look at my life, look at my karma, what bad karma I did, I am suffering this. Well, whose bad karma is it? It's not your karma. Did you know that you cannot have karma at all? Soul has no karma whatsoever. Never had, never will. Then what karma are we talking of? Karma is only a pattern set up on our minds for having certain experiences. It nothing to do with us. We are just to watch it. We are supposed to watch the play of karma taking place on a mind given to us to watch. Where's the big deal about it? And we are constantly thinking, my karma. No, no, not your, ma your karma. The karma of your mind placed in front of you to enjoy the show. Change your attitude. Change your point of view. And you will see your life change. These are very simple tips I am giving which can change your life instantly. Of course, if you can meditate and go within, you will find many more changes. It's so beautiful. You cannot always hold the awareness. I must caution that. That some people think that if we woke up, we will always be awake. It doesn't happen like that. Every day we wake up from our sleep. Next day when we go to sleep, we are not awake. We sleep again and again. We dream again and again. But we know what it means to dream. It means nothing. Because our time when we can look at a dream as a dream is when we are awake. Similarly, if you are awake at a higher level, you will find that you are waking up after a long time. But if you wake frequently, that means go to that state frequently, then this will be a normal thing to come back to this. In the beginning, it may happen that it will look like I had a very lucid dream. I had a very clear dream. I don't know if it was a dream. It didn't look like a dream when I was dreaming. It looked like more real than this. But now, where the doubt crept in? Because we've come back to what we think is the only reality. We haven't had frequent chances of waking up like we have from regular dreams in the physical world. So that is why I suggest if you want to have experiences of wakefulness through meditation, have it frequently so that you have that's a frequent state of wakefulness. These are regular sleep patterns into which you go and have dreams. Life changes automatically. That's a much better state to be in. These are just the peripheral benefits of meditation. These are very peripheral things to discover the whole source of the whole creation. To see how it originated, how it's coming into being, you can discover all those within yourself. Nothing is coming to us from outside. Everything outside is coming from inside. Inside is the source. Outside is the reflection of it. We are taking the reflection to be more real than the origin because we don't look at the origin. We only look at the reflection. Once great master gave an example of a man in a village looking into a pond of water. He had a glim glimpse of the moon. Moon was up in the sky, but he was looking in the water. Somebody said, you are looking in the wrong direction. That's not the moon. He said, that is the moon, I can see it. I see it clearly. And then 
the man stirred the water a little. I can see the moon breaking into many pieces. No, the moon never breaks. I can see it. I'm sure. It's my personal experience. Moon breaks. Then he put some mud into the water, but the moon went away. Yeah, I know he comes and goes. <laughs> the moon is steady up in the sky all the time. What happened? Looking in the wrong direction. That's our state. This body of ours is functioning like a pool of water. We are looking outside into the water, not looking at the source which is inside. Instead of up and down, thinking within and out, it's like that. And we are looking at this, oh, things change. Nothing is changing. I am going from here to there. You have gone nowhere. Only the experience changed from here to there. It looks like we are moving. We never moved. It's just the, we are not seeing in the right direction. So the man said, Okay, I'll give you a chance. When you look up a little bit, don't look at the sky you don't want to because you believe everything is in the pool. He brought a mirror and he showed the mirror and put the mirror to reflect the moon. He said, your moon has disappeared. This one is still there. Oh, you had the moon in your hand all the time? <laughs> he doesn't have the moon in his hand. Then he moves the mirror. Oh, moon can move so much. <laughs> moon is not moving at all. But the mirror is moving. Now this guy is thinking, the mirror is the moon. Because he is seeing it there. He says, it's a reflection. Now look up. He persuades him with difficulty. Now look up. Looks up. That was the moon. This is a reflector. This was a pool. The moon was inside. The mind was a reflector. The senses were the pool. And this body is the muddy pool. Muddy water. That's why we can't see the moon. We can't see reality. We muddy the water every day. This physical body, what I am saying, appears to have the greatest wealth in the world. It creates reality. It creates God. It has, this body contains everything, including the Creator and ourselves. Imagine what a wonderful thing we have around us. And what are we doing to it? Put some junk food in the body. Eat all undesirable things which the mind says, don't eat, we say, let's eat. We are full. No, we don't feel full a little more. We get little fat. We don't want to be fat, but we want to eat a little more. <laughs> no. Doctors have found a very strange thing now. Our nerve cells, every cell in the body, communicates through the nervous system with our brain. The Message goes at lightning speed. You pinch here, at once the brain knows it. You're pinching. Little pin hurts you, at once you know it has hurt. No time lag. At the speed of light, 184,000 or 185,000 miles per second speed. But in the stomach, in the, in the gut, there are some bacteria sitting there. Two types of bacteria, good and bad. Good ones like healthy foods and bad ones like junk food. They have had their own taste developed over time. And when we are full, you know, the structure of communication with the brain takes 20 minutes to say to the brain, I am full. Very odd. Every other cell of the body conveys instantaneously. The hunger cells, which are reporting that I am full, Take 20 minutes, and those are the 20 minutes we all overeat. <laughs> I went to a Japanese meal. They said, we are very careful what we serve in the last 20 meals of your several course, 11 course dinner. We delay the last by 20 minutes. That's why they don't overeat, and they can maintain lean bodies. In the United States, we are using those 20 minutes in a very odd way. More food inside, more food inside. So this is what we are doing to the temple of a living God. This is what we are doing, we have to find everything. And not only in the stomach and the belly we are doing this, look at what we are doing in our mind, in our head. All kinds of crazy thoughts, dirty thoughts, bad intentions. What are we doing to the real temple 
Outside temple, we are keeping clean. Outside church, we want no noise and keep it absolutely clean. Outside synagogue, look how beautiful we keep them. Outside, look at a masjid, look at a mosque. How careful we are about these outside buildings. And the one that is real, where we really God right, where God can be found, we are fouling it up so much. Don't we realize the value of what we have got? This human body, the most precious thing one could have got in this reality. And we got it. We are lucky. We got it. I was telling some friends of mine that it takes a lot of good karma, a lot of good karma to get the human form. We think this is the only form of life. This is not the only form. In Indian scriptures, they have listed 84 lakhs, which means 8.4 million forms of life. That life can exist, souls can exist, souls can take up 8.4 million forms. Half of them, 5.6 billion are believed to be the plant kingdom and the, and the different things that occur under the oceans and so on. Huge! Those who are surviving and those who are not surviving, those who have to still discover them, are all in that list. Only in the last 400 species in that list, the human being is one of them. The 400 also include angels, also include gods who are running these universes, also contains all higher deities running the astral causal planes. They are all listed there as forms of life. And that whole list of 8.4 million forms of life, which we can all be taking one after the other, depending upon a simple law introduced by our own mind called the law of cause and effect, the law of karma. We just change forms by that law, one law we are applying to ourselves. And out of those 8.4 million, there is only one, only one form in which we can say that this is Excuse me for a minute. There's only one form in which we can say that we are seekers of the truth, human form. Look at all the other forms. Plants can say, animals can't, <coughs> insects can't, they're all living, drifting along to their instincts, pre-programmed DNA molecules, their instincts are created and they're living by that. Gods, angels, know everything, know the future, know free will, know seeking. We are ignorant people with seeking, with free wills. Free will created by your ignorance. But imagine what a great thing to be able to be a seeker. That's the body we have. Make good use of it. Treat it with the respect it needs. Treat it with the care it needs. And make the maximum use of all the opportunities lying inside it. Seek inside. You get guidance automatically. Don't worry about finding a guru or finding somebody. Those gurus are found for satisfying our mental curiosities, our mental needs, our physical needs. But the guru who comes to you for your spiritual seeking of the ultimate truth appears by himself. He will appear in your life at the right time when you are ready. Readiness means that you have had enough of this show. If you're still enjoying the show, keep on going. You're not ready yet. If you feel you're done with this, had enough of it, such a person will appear. It's automatic arrangement. And over time, over a short time, you will begin to discover who that person is, who is going to be your perfect big master. So happy to share these things again with you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Next month, we'll, the dates are nothing already settled. You can have a look at them. And thank you very much for very patiently listening to me. God bless you all.